Hi, I'm Claire Daniels. I'm Rachel Brown. And I'm Richard Mack. And in this whistle stop, we're going to look at how referees play their part around player safety on game day. We receive lots of queries regarding referees' responsibilities, so we're going to look at the most popular ones, and that's high tackles, concussion awareness, boot studs and mouth guards. Let's start with high tackles. In 2017, World Rugby issued new guidelines around sanctions for contact around the head or neck area. Tacklers should not target the head or neck area. If they do, it must be sanctioned. Now let's look at concussion awareness. England Rugby have developed Headcase, a concussion awareness programme that has information resources and education modules. From a referee point of view, it specifically focuses on the recognition and the removal of players. Many of you watching would have already completed this, but if you haven't, you need to. Concussion is something you need to be aware of. It's something we all need to be aware of. So, your first step must be to complete the online head case module. Once you've done the online training and raised your awareness, you're in a position to make an informed decision if a player receives a knock to the head. And remember, as the referee, your decision is final. This leads us on to a common question we receive. In any club, school or community setting, if the referee suspects a concussion on the pitch, the player must be removed and replaced. If they go off, they stay off. Regardless of who may be on the touchline, the player must not return to play. We appreciate that many of you know this, but there have been occasions where people have tried to return a player to the game. This is not allowed. Here are some example conversations that may help when dealing with a head incident on the pitch. OK, can you explain the situation please? Yeah, the player's taken a bit of a knock to the head. They're a bit dizzy and a bit dazed, but I think if we just take them off for five minutes and let them settle, they should be able to come back on. Okay, if you're saying to me that you think the player's dazed or dizzy, then for me that's a clear sign of concussion. Therefore, the player must be removed from play and take no further part in the game. Okay. If you or the first aider recognise any sign or symptom of concussion, the player must be removed from play and take no further part in the game. Okay, what's the situation here? So the player's taken a knock to the head, but I've assessed him and there's no signs or symptoms of concussion. So I'm happy for him to continue and we're just going to monitor him. Okay, so no sign of concussion. You're happy that he remains on the pitch and you're going to keep an eye out? Absolutely. Thank you. Remember, a knock to the head doesn't always mean there is a concussion. But if you have a suspicion of a concussion, the player must be removed from the pitch and take no further part in the game. Another common query we receive is about footwear, and in particular, studs. You must always check the player's footwear before a game. In essence, as long as the studs on the player's boots are not sharp or burred in any way, then they should be okay. The easiest way to check this is with a visual inspection. If you see a stud or plastic mould that looks suspect, run your hands over the top to check them. Football boots are okay to wear in rugby, but remember, the stud should not be sharp or burred. And if you're not happy, ask the player to change the stud or remove the boots. As a national governing body, England Rugby recommends wearing a mouth guard. We all want to keep our nice smile. But they are not compulsory, even among age grade rugby players. As referees, this means that mouth guards are not something that you need to be checking every player is wearing before a game. Some clubs and schools may have guidelines about their players wearing them, but as a referee, it's not your responsibility to check every player. Everyone in the game has a duty of care when it comes to player safety. So here are our three top tips. Tip number one, complete the England Rugby Online Concussion Awareness Headcase module. Tip number two, remember, safety is always the first principle of refereeing. And tip number three, your local referee society is always up to date with the latest advice. So why not join if you haven't already? So there you have it. There are our three top tips. And remember, putting player welfare at the heart of the game is our priority.